Hey, it's Don the Auction Professor. Today I wanted to talk about scams and all these deceptive practices that you're going to run into selling online. First off, let me tell you, never take it personally. Never, ever take it personally. Don't go off the handle when this happens. These people don't know you at all. It's not a personal issue. It's just a theft issue. It would have just been somebody else if it wasn't you. It's something that's going to happen from time to time. For the last 10 years or so, the wife and I have been buying Christmas gifts for our family, our kids, the whole works, from online. Every year, there's one incident that we have, whether it's a fictitious item not in the condition or something along that line that's a scam of sorts happens. And I'm very cautious. I'm very careful. I check everything out before I purchase it. So I never look at, let's just look at the cheapest price because that's not always the best deal if it's going to come and not be the way it's supposed to be. Scams are going to happen. Every business that I've ever worked for or been involved in has a ratio of theft or loss built into their model. So it's something that every industry really knows. Even if it's something that doesn't sell to the public, so to speak, there's going to be breakage. There's going to be internal theft from employees and things along that line. So there's always a loss point somewhere. For a online seller, the loss point is possibly a fraudulent buyer that's trying to take you or pull a fast one. Such as switching out the item, you sending them a very nice top-end Blu-ray disc and them sending you back a VHS player or something like that. That's something that happens. One year we got several bricks in the mail that equated to the weight of a PS3, which is what we were supposed to get. So this kind of thing is a scam that people look at and try to pull all the time. Again, it's not geared towards anybody specific. Other issues as a seller that you're going to run into are people complaining it's not as described, such as in the clothing area. It's harder to fight some of those not as described in that aspect of it for clothing or something along that line, because eBay doesn't know who's telling the truth. As a general rule in stuff like that, um, I eat it sometimes. And it's just, you know, again, a cost of doing business. I know it's not the right answer everybody's going to want to hear, but you're going to take some losses. There's just no way around it. And getting upset and yelling or going off on eBay or somebody else is not going to fix the issue. The best thing to do is to just stay calm. If somebody sends you the wrong item, play dumb. This is the, your best response you can do. Play dumb and say, hey, it looks like um, that you sent me the wrong item. Maybe you just got the label mixed up. Hey, 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 it's happened to me. LOL. Something along that line. What you want them to do is acknowledge that they did something that wasn't correct. That's all you need to do is put some doubt. If you jump on them immediately, they're going to know they've been had and they're not going to admit to a single thing. They probably won't even respond to you. If you blow it off, they're going to try and put it off as long as possible so they can say, hey, I'm going to go look into it. The majority of the time, like 75% of the time that I've had an issue, and I don't have many, but when we do, this is the way I've gotten many of the cases blown out immediately, was that they admitted to something in there. They'll do a return notice or something, state this or state that. I'll email them. They'll say, hey, well, this wasn't exactly the case, and I got them right off the bat. That is the best way to do it. Other issues you're going to run into as a business, which I run into too, not very often, but they do happen, are people reporting it to PayPal as a fraudulent one or them reporting it to their charge card company after they received the item. With those cases, you have to be diligent. Many people don't even log into their PayPal account very often, which is kind of detrimental to your, your case. I look at ours every morning. I look at every payment source that I have once a day, every day, no matter what. And that's just to catch these cases. Let's say somebody opens up a case in PayPal. You're only given so much time to do the initial response on it. So I'm right on the ball with those. And when somebody does open up a case, I state that they purchased this item, they separately paid for the item, I ship the item, and I have tracking to state that it is delivered. I include the tracking number, and I will always do a screenshot from eBay that shows that it was delivered, it shows the tracking, the whole works, as many as it takes to prove my side of the story. I will also then go and email them through eBay and ask, you know, was there an issue? You know, was this a mistake? Blah, blah, blah. Again, being nice, no accusations whatsoever. Sometimes these turn out to be a mistake. They didn't realize they purchased something, spent a month or so forgetful or whatever the case may be. Don't jump off the handle on any of these. It won't do you any good. Won't do you any good arguing with eBay. If you state your point, 
you know, ask for upper management, ask for whoever you can. If that doesn't satisfy it, I would call back a second time. If you are like us and you offer free returns with 30-day return policy, if somebody does return something and it's not as stated, I don't have to give them a full refund. I can cut off half of it from that. Now, in some cases like this, when I have called eBay, I've been able to, with eBay's permission, a written statement that I could deduct part of the shipping costs when things were scammed on me. So there's a lot of things you can do. If the item is not right and for some reason the case is closed in the buyer's behalf, you can have them open it back up. And if, let's say, they side with them initially, don't panic either because many times when a buyer is trying to pull a fast one, it's not even looked at by eBay itself. It is all done electronically through the system. So that's what you've got to think about. So if a case is opened up and it's immediately closed in, in the buyer's behalf, that doesn't mean anything. You just call eBay and have the case reopened. You can challenge the case and then you can go from there and produce your evidence just like you would any normal way. But the key thing here is protect yourself. Another good reason why the 30-day free returns is good. Because if they do have an issue, even if you refund them, they can leave you feedback, negative feedback, without free 30-day returns. With a 30-day free return policy, with eBay posted on your listings, they can't leave you feedback if they open up a return. They have to open up the return, no. That's a good saving grace for anybody. I always push everybody to immediately open up a return when they complain about anything. If they want a partial refund or anything, I just tell them, please open up the return. It's process through there that way I can get credit for any partial refunds and then any evidence put into the case I can alter that decision let's say I figure out after we've went back and forth they open up the case they make a false statement in opening the case up that doesn't match their email I got them again as that that is the case most of the time those are issues that are, are solvable with you I've even been able to plead my case to eBay when I didn't have their proof on the matter by other means too I mean you can look at a seller's history. You can look at their negatives. Sometimes that's enough to sway and show that, yes, they have a steady history of doing things like false returns and things along that line. Just like um, when people buy items from you and then they don't pay, I always open up an, a non-payment case against the buyer. If it's been more than 48 hours and they email me after that point, I still let it ride. I don't do anything other than that, especially if they say they're not going to pay for it. That is not necessarily a scam, but that falls into the same category of potential loss where you could lose something. So be safe with everything. Don't go off the handle. Talk nicely. Talk like you don't get what they're trying to do, even if you know for sure that they are trying to scam you. Let them admit something in an email. Tell them you're old. Tell them you, you you're, have vision problems. Tell them you couldn't read the email very well. Tell them anything that you want. You want them to admit something. That is your best way. And as I said, the 30-day free return policy will save you when they open up a return. They have to open up the return, though. So if somebody complains about any issue whatsoever, as long as they open up a return, you are safe. Even if you don't give them a dime back. And even if you said you were going to give them a dime back and circumstances changed, they can't hold you to that. As long as you have viable reasons and why you didn't do it. And then as well, they cannot leave you negative feedback. So even though a person's trying to scam you, they can still leave negative feedback. Get them to open up that return. That's the bottom end here, the bottom line. Just like with PayPal, send all the information that you have. Don't freak out. Don't go panicking. Charge back the same thing. Send a screenshot of all pertinent things. Send a screenshot of the sale, of your actual account that shows where it was, the title, the whole works, who it was sold to, and then a second screenshot of the tracking information that shows it was delivered. If the item wasn't delivered, there's nothing you can do. It is out of anybody's hands to fix the issue. You will just have to eat the cost, the loss on that, unless you had insurance. So again, don't panic. That's the number one thing I can tell you. It's not the end of the world. You're going to get ripped off. I can tell you readily right now, right off the bat. Some stores like uh, retail establishments have a 3% loss year by year, standard. They pay prevention professionals 
to be undercover agents in their store to find people robbing and, and stealing. They put cameras in and spent tons of money on surveillance to catch employees doing it as well in the stock room out back. These are things that, that stores have to do. You're going to have to take that into consideration that you're going to have theft happen through scammers and cheats and swindlers on online platforms. It's easier to fight them on eBay and Etsy and some of the other platforms than it is on Amazon. Amazon, it's almost impossible, and I usually just give in and be done with it because it's not worth all the aggravation and hassle. You, you can't talk to someone half the time anyway, and there's not much that they will do. They usually side with the buyer on Amazon. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not criticizing. We do do well on Amazon, so it's still a viable platform. Again, it's just figured into my percentage of loss. Everybody should have one of those categories. How much are you going to lose? You can put things that you lose, such as you made a mistake, into that last category. It'll help you budget throughout the year. You'll know where you stand based on potential loss. So if you don't have any losses, you'll have a little extra money at the end of the year. So just be safe. Play it safe. Don't panic. Don't freak out. It's going to happen. I'm telling you right this very second. Sometimes it's unintentional. Sometimes it is. The majority of the time, I should say, it probably is intentional. But anyway, take those into consideration when you're doing this business. Project yourself a certain percentage that's going to be lost because stuff is going to happen. I don't know anybody who's been doing this for any length of time who hasn't had some scammer, some cheat, some swindler try to attack them and get money from them. I have a case going on right now with a chargeback issue, which sounds like it's going to be again cited in my behalf because again they opened up a legitimate account the item was delivered i can prove all of this without a shadow of a doubt so anyway that's what i have for you today hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts if you enjoyed the video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell a friend